All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. If they have observed all things, whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Today the topic is about, we're going to discuss about the importance of water baptism formula. The question that people often ask is, is it that we are going to be baptized in the Father's and Holy Spirit or in the name of Jesus? It's so confusing because most of the denominational Christians all over around the world, they practice the difference, the form of baptism. So when they baptize the believers, the people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they will baptize them not in the name of Jesus Christ, but in give a baptism in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So the name Jesus is totally missing. But the people who are baptizing in the Father's and Holy Spirit, they will always justify themselves by saying, see the Matthew 20 verse 19. So this evening I just want you to focus your attention and concentrate on verse 19. When we observe it, According to many historical references and according to the many historical evidences, it's clear that the early church, the New Testament church, apostolic church, or the early church, the baptismal formula was always in the name of Jesus Christ until the 4th century. Many church historians, including Eusebius, he even claim that according to the early manuscripts of the Matthew 20 verse 19, he said the warning, such as that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is nowhere to be found in Greek and Hebrew text. Now Eusebius is also known as one of the most respectable historians who have recorded the history of the, the second, the fourth, and the third century, all the institutions and all the church historians, even in this modern day, we all rely on Eusebius writing. We wanted to know what happens, or in order to determine, in order to know the second, third, and fourth century, the church history, we always rely on Eusebius writings. Now, the Eusebius claim that according to Hebrews, the Greek and Old Ministry, the wording Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost is not there. So he went on to say that Jesus Christ directly said to his disciples, Go in here for the old nations, baptizing them in my name. According to Eusebius and according to many historical evidences. Now let's give a sight for the moment because we're going to have time to talk about all these historical evidences that we have. But one day I want to tell you that even the Roman Catholicism, even the Roman Catholic Church also acknowledges that yes, the baptism of formula in the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost started after the 4th century. Even the Roman Catholic Church acknowledged in the Encyclopedia, even in Roman Catholic Encyclopedia, they proudly declared, saying that the early church, the baptism of formula was not in the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, but in the name of Jesus. According to the Roman Catholic Encyclopedia. 
So even the Roman Catholic Church is acknowledging, saying that yes, according to the church history and according to the Holy Bible, the early church you know, water baptismal formula was not in the names of the Father, Son, and the Spirit, but in the name of Jesus or Jesus Christ. We have all the evidence, we have all the proof, we have all the literature available here in our seminary. But let's get aside again all the historical evidence. Now let's focus in the context from the Kingdom's Bible. Now, what we need to observe is about the context. We need to see even the verse 19 carefully. Here it is a saying. According to the Kings of the Bible, he went on to say, baptizing them in the name. Now, if Jesus really wanted the disciple to go on and baptize all nations in the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, instead of the name Jesus Christ, he would have definitely used the word names. He would have used the plural form instead of the singular form. You can identify with the hearing that Jesus saying, baptizing in the name. Absolutely singular. Of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Very clear. And then Jesus saying, you go on and baptize the people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So the disciples knew that. The apostles knew that the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Therefore, from the day of Pentecost, the apostles began to baptize the whole nations in the name of Jesus or Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So even if you read from the Greek and Hebrew text, even if you read from uh, any languages, vernacular Bibles, or even in any English versions of the Bibles, even in the Hindi Bible, the Chinese Bible, the Japanese Bibles, the Burmese Bibles, or Sema Bible, Konyak Bibles, Uki Bible, Tato Bibles, or Tin, any Bibles, Bizo Bible, Muse Bible, you search it over the world. That you will see that from the day of Pentecost, that the early church gave the baptism only in the name of Jesus Christ, and never they baptized the people in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The baptismal formula of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is nowhere to be found in the entire Holy Spirit. So now the next question is, if Jesus really want them to go and baptize, if Jesus really wanted the apostles or his disciples to go on and baptize the Father, Son, and the Spirit, then why would the apostles disobey their Lord and their Master? So what do you think? <clears throat> so do you think that the apostles and the disciples of Jesus Christ disobeyed the Lord Jesus Christ? Can we dare to say that? Can we dare to say the apostle disobeyed the Lord Jesus? Obviously not. Hallelujah. They obeyed the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, in accordance to his instructions, they go on, they went on and baptized every nation in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If Jesus really wanted them to go, and baptized in the Father and of the Spirit, at least in one place. At least when they were giving a baptism to the Gentiles in Acts chapter 10, at least in Acts chapter 10, the apostles, the disciples of Jesus Christ, they would have given the baptism in the Father and of the Spirit. But we can see that according to Acts chapter 10, even verse 48, now Peter commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. So even when they were baptizing in the Gentiles, 
Christians, even to the Gentiles, they baptize them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So my friends, it's very clear. As far as the New Testament or the Bible and the church is concerned, the early church, the New Testament church, the baptism of water, baptism of formula was always in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because the apostle knew that the name is a singular. So the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost Jesus. Therefore, they baptized every nation in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some people who say that I don't care if the water baptism from the light of the Father of the Spirit is only to be found in the Holy Bible, but still I'm going to practice this our tradition. You know what is my response? It's up to you. The choice is yours. You have all the free wills. You have all the free will to exercise. The choice is in your hand whether you want to baptize in the Father and the Spirit or in the name of Jesus. But as for me and my family, as for me and my people, we will do in accordance with the Holy Scriptures. We will baptize all this in the name of Jesus Christ because the command is to baptize in the name. Hallelujah. Not in the Father, Son, and the Spirit. And we know that the name of the Father is not the Father. And we also know that the name of the Son is not the Son. The name of the Holy Ghost is not the Holy Ghost. Because we know the name of the Father is Jesus. The name of the Son is Jesus. The name of the Holy Ghost is also Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's prove it right now. So therefore the disciple knew that the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is Jesus. Therefore from the day of Pentecost, they began to baptize every nation in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's prove it right now. That the name of the Father is not the Father, my friends. And if I ask you, brother, mostly tell me, what is your father's name? What would be your answer? Will you say my father's name is the father? If that is your response, that means all your friends will say you are abnormal. You are half correct or full correct. <laughs> Am I right? Because everyone knows that the father is a title. You will never say my father's name is the father, but instead you will say my father's name is James Ong, for example. Or my father's name is Leanuk or Kulian Tang. My father's name is maybe a Daniel. My father's name is Solomon, David, etc. Am I right? But I'm sure that you will never say my father's name is father. Because everyone knows that the father is a title on a name. Hallelujah. So therefore, even Jesus Christ has already declared that he comes in the Father's name. So when he came, what was the name being given unto him? We know that is Jesus. So from this verse, we can clearly understand that the name of the Father is Jesus. The name of the Father is not the Father. Let's turn our Bible to John the Father. The Gospel of John, the 5 and verse 43, this clearly says that Jesus said, I, I am come in my Father's name. I am come in my Father's name, and we will receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. See, the difference is that Jesus didn't say, I come in, I, 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 I come on behalf. He didn't say that. He didn't say I come on behalf of my father, but instead he said, I come in my father's name. Hallelujah. So what was the name he conferred unto him? What was the name given to him? According to Matthew 121, his name shall be called Jesus. 
Amen. And also we can see in John 14 that Jesus went on to claim that he is the Father. Hallelujah. Let's see again in John 14. Somebody please read out from John 14 verse 7 to 11. Let's hear it from our brother Leonu. You read it all in the 14 verse 7 to all the way to the other, please. If you know me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth you know me and have seen him. Billy said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it shall face us. Verse 9. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me? Philip, is he that hath seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doth the words. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or as believe me for the very works sake. Amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus saying, believe me. Now thousands of people around the world, millions of people around the world, we are claiming we believe in Jesus. Amen. I challenge to you, my friend, if you truly believe in Jesus, why don't you believe in his saints? Hallelujah. Amen. It is a Isua can ring, Isua can ring, that he can ring, that you say, for him, that it's it. You may not believe in me, it's okay, fine. I don't want you to believe in me either. I don't want either of you to believe in me either. I want you to believe in the Holy Word of God. Hallelujah. I want you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to believe in the living Word of God. And Jesus said, believe me when I say this, that I am the Father and the Father is in me. Hallelujah. We often claim that we believe in Jesus. He is my everything. He is my all in all in Christ alone. Such a wonderful lyric, such a wonderful words and sentences. Such a wonderful phrases we often use. But in practical, if you truly believe in Jesus, why don't you believe in his sayings? Why don't you believe in his words? Because Jesus said, believe me that I In other words, the spirit that dwells in him. In other words, the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ is none other the Father himself. Hallelujah. If Sister Katili would say, Sir, show me your spirit. How can I show my spirit? Because the spirit is invisible. You can only see my body. You can only see my flesh. Sister Kakili, if you have seen my body, if you have seen my flesh, you have seen my spirit now. Because there is no way that I can show you my spirit because my spirit is invisible. Spirit is invisible, not visible things. Hallelujah. And Jesus went on to say that in verse 10, believe uh, thou Lord that I am the Father, and the Father made the words. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not myself, but the Father dwell in me. He doeth the works. As a servant, as a man that Jesus could not, couldn't do, uh, he could not even do the miracles, but as God, as the Father, he does all the miracles. Hallelujah. For example, when he raised the Lazarus from death, he said, Lazarus, come forth. Hallelujah. When he doing the works, he exercised his deity as the Father, as the Lord God Almighty. He raised the dead. Hallelujah. As a man, he was born. As a man, he died. Hallelujah. But as God, he raised somebody. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. And all Jesus went on to say in verse 9, nine Jesus said unto him, to the Philip, Have I been so long time with you? And yet, has thou not known me, Philip? He that has 
seen me, had seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, see what the Father? He that had seen me, had seen the Father. Hallelujah. That means, my friend, if you see Jesus, you have seen the Father, because the people of Jesus Christ is the Father. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Father is not a separate person. According to the denominations of Roman Catholicism, doctrine is said, the Father is the first person, the Son is the second person. Nowhere in the Holy Bible, the Bible used those terminologies. According to the Bible, you want to know who's the first? Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus said, I am the first and I am the last. Hallelujah. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Stand for the truth, my friends. Because only the truth can set you free. False doctrines will never, never be able to save you. The more you defend the false doctrine, the more you will get exposed. You can't run away and justify the false doctrines. I urge you to stand for the living word of God. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said, He that has seen me has seen the Father. My wife and I, we are one. The day when we got married, spiritual and socially people call us. Now that I present to you, Mr. and Mrs. Bobby Bobby. Now that we are one, no matter how close I am, all right, with my spouse or with my wife, but if you people want to see the picture of my wife, the photo of my wife, then I can never use this sentence. All these phrases I can never be able to use it. If you will want to see my uh, my wife's photo, then I can never say, if you have seen me, you have seen my wife. Impossible. Can I say that? If you have seen me, you have seen my wife. Is it possible? No. Because my wife and I, we are two different human beings. We are separate, separate persons. Though we are united, so nice that ever since that we are so nice, most of we are married, we are one. But still, then physically, we are two separate human beings. So no matter how close I am with my wife, I can never say, if you people have seen me, you have seen my wife. Say for example, some of our American friends wanted to see my wife's photo, a picture. I uploaded my passport. <laughs> like I uploaded my passport. And then on the bottom I just wrote something. I said, if you have seen me, you have seen my wife. And when they, they got so excited when they downloaded. I just wrote it there, these pictures, and when I download it, and when you open, my pictures over there, the model people think they'll think I'm abnormal. People think I'm a half brain or full brain. Because just because you see me, you cannot see my wife. Because my wife and I, we are two separate, different human beings. But Jesus can say that if you have seen me, you've seen my father. Because the Father is nowhere. He's not a separate person. Because Jesus said, I am the Father and the Father in me. He said, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So where is the Father? Jesus said, the Father is in me. Hallelujah. The Spirit that dwells in Jesus is none other than the Father himself. It was Jesus even claimed in Psalm 30, I and my Father are one. Hallelujah. And they were even prophet Isaiah say in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 say that Jesus is the everlasting Father. Hallelujah. And according to Malachi chapter 2 verse 10, the Bible says there is only one Father and the one Father has created us. According to the Old Testament and New Testament, there is only one Father. Ephesians chapter 
4 and verse 5 and 6 also say that one God and one Father. And if Jesus is the eternal Father, if Jesus is the everlasting Father, then logically we can conclude, we can understand that Jesus is the Father. Hallelujah. But the main man doctrines continue to say that the Father is not the Son and the Son is not the Father. That according to the main myth doctrine, my friends, according to the main myth criticism would say that, but that's not what the Bible says. But the Bible says totally different. The Bible says that Jesus said that I and my Father are one. I am in the Father. The Father is in me. And I am an apostle. Even here, the Peter and Paul, they all never knew that the Father is not a separate person, but Jesus Christ. Now let's go on and study again from the, the Colossians 2, verse 9 and 10. Hallelujah. Look at here again in the Colossians 2, verse 9. It says, For in Him. Alright, we know that. Who is this Him? We know that that's God. Jesus Christ. It's referring to our Lord Jesus. That means for in Jesus Christ dwelling all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and ye are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and power. Amen. But according to the main main doctrines Denominational doctrines. They went on to defend and they always claim that the God had the God had there were three separate persons: the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You just need to believe that God is one in three persons. Don't try to resent that. And they even though you know say that, they often claim. That the God has is a mystery, which means it is incomprehensible. You won't be able to comprehend it. You won't be able to understand it. Despite all that, you continue to believe it. How is that possible? Now let's try to see what the scripture has to say. But according to the Bible, the Godhead is not a mystery, my friend. According to the Holy Scripture, Hallelujah. The Holy Scriptures reject that main main doctrines. What the main main doctrine claims is totally rejected by the Holy Scriptures. Because according to the Holy Bible, we can clearly see that in Christ Jesus dwell all the fullness of Godhead bodily. In Greek word, Godhead is theotis. Which means the role of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the entire Hallelujah roles of the gods, Lord Almighty, include the role of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Everything is there in the Godhead. Hallelujah. And here the Apostle Paul is saying, For in Jesus dwelleth all the fullness of God and body, and therefore in verse 10 said, Ye are complete in Him. Hallelujah. We don't need a three separate person differently because when we believe in Jesus and when we baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, when we accept Jesus Christ, the Lord God Almighty, then we are absolutely complete in Christ Jesus. All you need, all you need is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Therefore, in the book of Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 6 says, Thus is the Lord, the King of Israel, the Lord of hosts, that I am the first, that I am the last, that beside me there is no God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am the first and I am the last. Beside me there is no God, my friend. So according to the Holy Scripture, there is only one God, and His name is Jesus. And the name is the name of our holy. And the name is the name that is given for our salvation. 
Hallelujah. Therefore, my friends, are very, very clear. Now let's also see who is the Holy Ghost. According to the so-called men doctrines, the Northern doctrine claims that the Holy Ghost is a third person. Let's find out what the scripture has to say about this. Let's turn our Bible to the Gospel of Psalms chapter 14 again. See here in verse 18 and you read up to verse 20. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while the world see me no more. But you see me because I live and you so to live. At that day, you shall know that I am the Father, that I am in my Father, and He in me, and I in you. In verse that we can clearly see that Jesus Christ claimed to be the Holy Ghost because He said, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come unto you. Hallelujah. The promise that He made to the disciples, He fulfilled it. He already fulfilled it when he came on the Eucalyptus as the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. And also, let's go again. To the Gospel of uh, John, chapter 14. See here in verse 26. But in the Holy Ghost, which is by the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. From this verse, you can clearly understand, you can clearly see that the Holy Ghost also comes in the name of the Lord Jesus. So the name of the Holy Ghost is not the Holy Ghost, but Jesus. Let me also prove it right now. From the book of Philippians, chapter 1. Philippians, chapter 1, and verse 19. Can we read out together? Philippians, chapter 1, and verse 19. Look at this in chapter 4, 
for respite, the Lord of the Fifth Baptism. Every knee is so bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Who is the Lord? Jesus Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And according to this Paul, and according to all the scriptures, we can see that the Lord Jesus, that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. In the Gospel of John, the 40 verse 26, that Jesus made a promise to his disciples that he would abide with them forever. When you, when you uh, compare that John 14 verse 26 with Matthew 28 verse 20, you can clearly understand that the Holy Ghost is not a separate person, but rather the Spirit of Jesus Christ Himself. Let's compare. Let's try to analyze it again. Come back again to John 40, verse 26. Amen. Let's all read together. The Gospel of John, the 40, verse 26. Send John 14, 26. Can we read it out, please? But the Lord, which is the Holy Ghost, from the Lord, from the Holy Ghost, from the Lord, from the Holy he shall lead you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ clearly says, Amen, that the Holy Ghost will continue with them, that he will continue to abide with them. Hallelujah. So when you compare this one with Matthew 28, Hallelujah. And verse 20, you can clearly see, hallelujah, that the Holy Ghost is not a separate person, amen, but the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be the name of God, hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want you to turn the Bible to the uh, Matthew 28 and verse 20. Okay, also that's before we do that, let's read out uh, the sense of the volume in verse 16. Can we read it out together again? Sends on John chapter 14 and verse 16. Can you please read it out? And I will pray the Father, and he shall lead you another the Father, that he may abide with you forever. Amen. So according to Matthew and the story, according to John chapter 14, verse 26, we can understand. That the whole the comforter is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. So here Jesus is saying in verse 16. In John to the 40, verse 16, that Jesus is saying that I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter, that the Holy Ghost, or that the comforter may abide with you forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So according to John 14, verse 16, it is absolutely clear that Jesus said that the Holy Ghost will abide with you forever. Hallelujah. But when you study Matthew 28, verse 20, you can clearly see the one who will continue to abide with the disciples forever is not a different God or a different person, but Jesus Christ himself. Let's turn the Bible in Matthew 28 now. Hallelujah. So let's turn the Bible to Matthew 28 and verse 20. So when you compare this John 14 verse 16 with and the Matthew 28 verse 20, you can clearly see that the Holy Ghost is not a separate person in the Godhead. The Holy Ghost is none other but the Spirit of Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. Let's find out. Matthew 28 and verse 20. Can you all read down together again? Why? 
help you speak, my friend. When you simply allow the Bible to speak, you can understand the true Hallelujah. Therefore, we always rely on the Holy Scriptures. We don't believe in so-called man-made doctrines, creeds, and man-made creeds and man-made doctrines. We rely on the Holy Scriptures alone. We are loving the Scripture to interpret the Scripture because the Bible says in the second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 that all the Scripture is given by the inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine and for reproof and for correction. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So if you want to know the truth, all you have to do is rely on the whole scripture. Simply allow the scripture to interpret the scriptures. Because according to Psalm 14 verse 16, Jesus is saying that the Holy Ghost, who is a comforter, he will abide with you forever. Praise the Lord. So when you simply allow the scripture to interpret the scripture, my friend, you can clearly understand that the Holy Ghost is not a separate person, but the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Jesus Christ Himself. That is not my opinion. That is not my philosophy, my friend. This is what the Bible says. Hallelujah. So therefore, when you throw the Bible in St. Matthew 20, verse 20, Jesus said, Pity them to turn all things whatsoever have commanded you, and lo, or behold, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. See here? According to Matthew 28, verse 20, the one and only who will continue to abide with the disciples or with the apostles forever is none other but Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always. In our Bible we have said, Come quiet at one in. And the Bible said, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I will continue forever and ever. I will be with you. Hallelujah. But in Samson 14, verse 16, Jesus said, The Holy Ghost, the Comforter, He will abide with you forever. But when you compare with Matthew 28, verse 20, you can clearly understand that the Holy Ghost is not a third person. By the way, even that terminology is nowhere to be found in the Bible. Those terminologies are simply a naming doctrine developed since the Nicaea Council of the 325 AD. Hallelujah. For I heard that no one knows that the Holy Ghost is not person. Everyone knows that the Holy Ghost is none other but Jesus Christ Himself. It is the Spirit of Jesus Christ, as Apostle Paul says. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 19. Hallelujah! Amen. Yeah, but the disciple knew that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost is not a three per separate person because they knew that the Father, the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost is Jesus. They were being continued to baptize every nation in the name of Jesus Christ. Whether you like it or not, my friends, that is the truth, and that is the whole truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you make up your mind to fight against the truth, my friend, you will end up fighting against not me, not fighting against uh, you and I. You will end up fighting against the one and only, our Lord Jesus Christ. And my friends, let me tell you, it is impossible for people like us, for the human being, to fight against the Almighty God. Let's go to Acts chapter 
9. Let's find out from the next chapter 9. What did Jesus Christ the Savior of Apostle Paul? In Acts chapter 9, see over here. Can everybody read out verse 5? Acts chapter 9 and verse 5. And he said to our Lord, Lord, and the Lord said, I am Jesus who those persecute. It is hard for me to be against the free. Amen. Amen. So Jesus Christ said, I am Jesus whom thou Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. That is the reason 
why you can see here Apostle Paul, sorry, Apostle Peter continued to say, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So if you people claim, if we people claim, if we claim to receive the goal of God, my friend, then my first question to you is that are you baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And if you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the purpose of remission of your sins, today, now is the time to do it. Hallelujah! Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. You know that even, even at midnight, if you look into this early church, even at midnight, the Zebra and his family were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Because they have already understood the importance and the necessity of the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Because it's only through the water baptism in Jesus' name that you can wash away your sins. And according to us, in John 3 verse 27, when we are baptized in the name of Jesus, we put on Christ. Or in other words, we clothe ourselves with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the reason why Apostle Paul says in Colossians chapter 3 verse 17, can you read all together, my friends? Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. Let's read it out. And I'm going to write it here. Amen. Because our times are up again. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. And whatsoever you do, Lord, forgive. Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give me thanks to God and Father by Him. Amen. So that is what the Bible says. In what we need, do all. Because we all know that Jesus name is above all name. It's far superior than the name Shalwe or Zehuan Adonai or Elohim. It is a far, far superior than including the title and soul of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because if I lay my hands on you and pray in the names of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even if I pray for 10,000 years, He will never be here. But if I would lay my hands on you, if I would say, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, you're going to get healed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because I'm invoking the saving name of God. Hallelujah. Because we all know because there is a power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Therefore, my friend, in accordance with the Holy Scripture, I want you to stand for the name of Jesus Christ. Then we proudly say that we the ABTS, we are the people of the name Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Thank you. So we all stand together. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's sing the 